Hey everyone, welcome back to Ask Confluent, where we answer questions from the internet. I'm your host, Gwen Shapira, and as you can kind of see, I'm on my own here today. Don't worry, this is not the new normal. We'll keep having guests on the show, but just for today, we'll have a quick segment. We'll have a few interesting questions from Stack Overflow today. So let's get started. <music> So the first question we got from Stack Overflow that showed up yesterday, and I thought it's a pretty good question. Uh, the person called Kartikian Durai Raj uh, asked, how Kafka nodes and Zookeeper communicate with each other? And he said, I couldn't find any details about how Kafka and Zookeeper work together. And what if we have a lot of garbage collection happening on Kafka node? What is going to be the result? Will Zookeeper disconnect? And if Zookeeper does disconnect, what's going to happen once it disconnects? And that's a really, really good question. First of all, because yes, it is slightly underdocumented because as Kafka engineers, we kind of feel like we're doing nothing special. We just use out of the box Zookeeper client. We don't do anything crazy to communicate. But garbage collection in Kafka does have a lot of impact on communication with Zookeeper. And it's actually a pretty large source of what we call flapping. So let's take a step back and just go over the question. Kafka and Zookeeper communicate using a Zookeeper client that Kafka has running as part of it. And the one of the things that Zookeeper clients do is maintain connection to Zookeeper. And they do it by do sending heartbeats. And when you configure Kafka, you can configure how long does it, without heartbeats, does it take before the connection disconnects, before you see it disconnect. So we'll show you the configuration um, down here. Uh, but by default, it says six seconds. So if a Zookeeper does not hear from Kafka for six seconds, you will see the Kafka broker disconnecting from Zookeeper. The meaning of it for Kafka is that this Kafka broker that just disconnected from Zookeeper is essentially no longer part of the Kafka cluster. The Zookeeper will actually tell the controller, hey, this broker is gone. I lost it. I don't see it anymore. And the controller will say, okay, this broker is gone. The logical result is to do a leader election, right? There are a lot of partitions that this broker was the leader for. It got reads, it got writes. We need someone else to take over. So immediately you see a lot of leader election. And even when the broker was not a leader for a partition, it was a follower. It was part of the what we call an in-sync replica set. It will immediately drop from the in-sync replica set and you see what we call ISR shrink and expand. If you monitor Kafka, you will probably want to monitor for things like Zookeeper disconnects, ISR shrink, ISR expand, and leader elections. And if you see a lot of them going on, a lot of spurious leader elections, you're like, hey, the broker didn't crash, it didn't disconnect from the network, what is going on there? Then you will want to check the garbage collection log because there is a good chance that if garbage collection takes more than the session timeout for Zookeeper, those six seconds, then Zookeeper will just assume the broker went away. So that's a imp really important thing to keep an eye on. And if you didn't know how Kafka and Zookeeper communicate, now you know and you know what to monitor and what to look for if you're seeing issues. Now, I wrote all that as a response to the Slack Overflow question. I actually had this moment of, do we answer it on the podcast first or do I go to uh, write it on Slack Overflow first and then um, go to uh, the podcast? So I answered it on Stack Overflow first and then uh, now I'm I gave the response here. And, but someone actually already responded to my response on Stack Overflow and he said, straight for the horse's mouth. And, well, I just want to make clear, I'm not, in fact, a horse. Just putting it out there. Okay. And then the next Stack Overflow question is actually quite old, and it's a question that I answered about, I think, almost two years ago. But like many things on the internet, the answer has changed. So I just want to point out that things are in constant motion and we have new answers to old questions. Uh, the question was Confluent Schema Registry Cluster Mode. And Vijay Kumar Viju 
said, I'm using Kafka Connect from Confluent to consume Kafka Stream and write it to HDFS in Perke format. By the way, very, very nice Kafka use case, uh, kind of textbook. I'm using schema registry service in one node and it's running fine. But now I want to distribute schema registry to cluster mode to handle failover. Running one schema registry, what if it crashes, right? So we want to have two and we want them to do failover. Any link on snippet on how to achieve that will be very useful. And we do have documentation on how to achieve that. And I will link to that below. But our documentation is a bit sneaky about it is that we actually document it under the title of multi data center schema registry. And we give you example, not just how to run a schema registry cluster, but actually how to run a schema registry cluster across multiple data centers, which is a very important thing to do. But what you may not have noticed that the entire instruction set applies, even if you want to run in one data center, you just need to know what parts are important in this smaller use case. So if you go to the documentation, you'll see we have two parts. One is how to do it if you run just Kafka and you don't have, you have Zookeeper, but you don't have access to it. You don't want to use it for schema registry. And the other option is if you want the schema registry to use Zookeeper, that's the older option. That's the one that I featured in my response from two years ago. These days it's recommended to use Kafka itself for leader election. And the way that you use Kafka for leader election is by being part of a consumer group. So even though the schema registry is not really a Kafka consumer, you'll want to create a schema registry group. You'll want to give it a group ID. And that's pretty much it. You just tell it how to connect to Kafka versus how to connect to Zuckerberg. And in a, you give it a group ID and Kafka will magically do the rest. The part you don't need is the master eligibility. If you have multiple data centers, you can say, when you do failover, I want failover to happen in this data center, but I don't want to fail over to the other data center unless I do something explicitly. Uh, so you have the ability to set which of the schema registry servers are eligible to become the new leader. Um, in if you're running schema registry in a single cluster, all of them are eligible to become leaders. So master eligibility will always be true. And now you can go to the documentation and make sense. And even though it says multi data center, you can still use all the instructions there inside a single data center. And I opened a small ticket to our docs team to make it clear because I kind of like uh, it could have been better which is, when you think of it, always true. Okay, more responses to the famous Martin Kleppmann keynote, the gift that keeps on giving for the podcast, I think. Questions about it never end. Kartik Rangaraju said, if those two events for different users creating username end up in different partitions, different threads will consume concurrently and we're back to square one. So Martin Kleppen gave an example of people creating accounts and having some dependencies between them. And sometimes you want things to be processed in parallel and you want them in different partitions. And sometimes you really have some dependency if you, do, you don't want two accounts with the same name to get created, for example, or if you uh, create an account and deposit some money, you really want it to get processed in that order. So this is very important. And he said, if you only had one partition, then this will work because there will only be one consumer running to the database, which is the same idea of serializable isolation, uh, which is true, not as much as isolation, but definitely serializability, the idea that things happened one after another because it forces writes to happen in a single thread. Now it's true, you can do that by having one partition, but then you lose the power of parallelism. And I think that one of our responsibilities as people who create data models and really design those architectures is to figure out which, which parts have to happen one after another and then make sure that all those events go to the same partition by giving them the same key and also figure out which parts are independent. If you have two completely different users with two completely different accounts, then maybe the account creation doesn't have to go to the same partition. The part that has to go to the same partition is maybe I'm taking money out of my account and putting it in the other account. Those may have to happen in the same partition and then you can give as the key transaction ID, make sure that the two events have the same transaction ID, they will go to the same partition and here we go. So this is really the challenge around creating good Kafka data models. Okay. 
That's it for questions for now. And now I want to highlight a small announcement. I tweeted that a few days ago. So here we are, 2019. And for 2019, I'm switching back to my software engineering role. And I'm joining Confluence, really amazing core Kafka team, the team that builds the brokers in Apache Kafka, makes them more scalable and more resilient and run really well in the cloud, uh, mostly for Confluent Cloud, but maybe for also for your own cloud deployments. Uh, so you should expect to see me at a lot of your conferences. You should expect to see, if you're following the Kafka mailing list, you should probably see me more in discussions and doing uh, pull requests, reviewing pull requests. Of course, if you're all excited about working on things like Kafka's and my team is still hiring and we'll be, I'll be excited to work together with you for sure. And then you should also expect more regular as Confluent because I won't be traveling all over the globe to various conferences. So I'm definitely looking forward to the rest of 2019. It's going to be very exciting. And now to... Confluence slapping itself on the back and saying we did a good job. We got a um, feedback for the Kafka Summit panel in the Kafka Summit San Francisco 2018. Our CTO Nehana Kidi hosted as uh, the CTO uh, from Microsoft and from Slack and uh, Martin Kleppman, and the, she kind of assembled this uh, panel and had a little discussion about really the big questions in the industry. So Mohammed Homaid said that this is a really great discussion, and I agree. So hop off on our YouTube channel and watch this really great discussion, and thank you, Mohammed. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, we also released toward the end of the year a recording of a demo where I show how to scale Kafka streams with Kubernetes. This is basically the demo portion from a Kafka Summit presentation. And it was kind of funny because when every time I do a demo as part of a presentation, I record myself. And this is good for two reasons. One, it really makes me nail down my presentation and make sure that I have a great demo. And second, if everything goes wrong during the presentation itself, I can always pull up a recording and not embarrass myself any farther. And we decided to release the demo as a standalone and Joe Hobot said that he really liked it. He even has a nice Kubernetes icon in his, um, I don't know what you call it, like uh, avatar, I guess, the image that he chose to represent himself on YouTube. And the, our intro to stream video, the Apache Kafka Stream API part one intro to streams, uh, Pen Go said, this is a really good one, thank you. And I agree, if you're still in doubt about stream processing, you see yourself as a beginner, you want to learn the basic concepts, ideas, there is a lot to wrap your head around, this is the video for you. And that's all we have for today. So that was fun. We have great questions from your community, as usual. I really wish you will also have an amazing 2019, as I hope to have myself. And just in case your New Year resolution is something along the lines of learn Kafka better, understand more about stream processing, build an amazing event-driven architecture for my company, subscribe to the Confluent channel because we're going to have a lot of content that will be very relevant for you and help you with your New Year resolution. Uh, so best of luck. Mm -hmm.